Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Today is the annual meeting, the 2012 annual meeting of the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory Association. And this is one of the many meetings that goes on throughout the year for the association. And it provides an opportunity to bring scientists and the community together. Laboratory Association members uh, benefit from lectures where Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory scientists come and talk to them. And it's a great thing to bring scientists and non-scientists together to educate people about the research that's done at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory and to show people in the community that scientists are people too. In order to uh, ensure that we have the best and brightest scientists working here and that they're working in the latest state-of-the-art facilities, the board, the big board of the lab, uh, has set aside over a hundred million dollars a year towards research. Okay, 25 percent of that total comes from the private sector. If you looked across the, uh, the, the harbor tonight coming over here, you would have seen the sea of lights and that inspired us. The theme of last year's annual fund campaign was Science Never Sleeps. Uh, and in fact, there are scientists working here well into the evening, and hence all the lights. And I'm pleased to report that last year we raised uh, slightly less than $6 million, which I'm told is an all-time record for, for, for the association. Well, the laboratory has been around since 1890. The association has been around since 1930 and was started by a group of people from this part of the world. Uh, we presently have over 1,200 members of the association um, and it's growing every year. We also, by the way, have 1,200 plus employees. Uh, so the lab is a very fine neighbor and a major source of employment for the larger community. How does what you do as a profession, how does it connect to what they're doing here? Well, that's a good question. Uh, probably no connection, um, except I might get a novel out of this. I mean, there's, there's a lot of material here for, a, uh, for an adventure thriller novel. But, uh, and, I don't, and I do not have a scientific background, but I don't think they're looking for that. They're looking for people you know, from the community, from all walks of life. And, uh, you know, as I say, I don't, I don't sit on many boards and I have, over the years. This is the only one I belong to now. And this is, this is interesting. I, I find it absolutely fascinating because I do a lecture at every board meeting. It's so uh, amazing what's going on uh, in, in the, in the uh, scientific world right now, in the medical research world, that you just absolutely, this is better than, this is better than reality TV. <laughs> The speaker tonight, I guess, is uh, has a son who has autism, and um, my friend Karen Orzel uh, said that he's just fantastic and would really be worthwhile coming down and hearing him speak. Oh. So, I, from a parental standpoint, that's my main area of interest. You know, autism is a very a difficult genetic disorder to sort of deconvolute, and we develop tools to look at cancer that can now be applied to autism. We're actually starting to sort of crack open this nut that was, was really impenetrable before by using the same techniques applied from cancer to neurological disorders about which we really didn't know much even just a few years ago. There's really two levels in which I'm speaking to someone in that case as a you know, fellow parent who's you know, suffered through a lot of the same sort of, you know, I don't know, horrible things that, you know, and learning process that a parent faces when their child is diagnosed with such a condition. And I, I you know, I, I'm also able to add some of the technical expertise of some of the discoveries we've made. So it, there are two different levels, but I think we can sort of combine them into one whole. And I, I, I do feel a lot of empathy, you know, because I've, I've been through this, and it, it's, it's not something I would wish on anyone. Unlike other research institutions that offer tenure, Cold Spring Harbor doesn't. Instead, its model focuses on competition. 
I'm very proud to say that our association has launched the careers of so many young scientists. Amazingly, to this day, um, so many people don't even know that this place exists. And I think this year in particular, uh, 1962 is when Jim Watson won the Nobel Prize with Francis Crick. Uh, so this is the 50th anniversary of his Nobel. Um, it, with, with that idea in mind, to get more people to come here uh, and see in those 50 years that have transpired how um, that one discovery has changed the world completely but also how Cold Spring Harbor as a whole has, has changed the science world completely. These people here are heroes, and they're not, they're not looked at as heroes. They're not looked at as you know, actors or baseball players, and yet what they're doing here is they're even more for humanity than I think any other profession I could possibly name. You know, if the goal is to extend life and extend the quality of life, this is where it's happening. You know, it's, it's just amazing to have this right here in our community. It really is.